I'm gonna go ahead and take the screw and make sure it's, oh, shit. That's not good. What's up everybody, welcome to the RE Visuals YouTube channel where you'll always find high quality visuals and high quality tech. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at some not so high quality tech, unfortunately, uh, because recently my laptop, which I've used for the past year, and it's been absolutely amazing to me, has finally crapped out on me and started doing some really weird stuff. So we're gonna get into it. It's kind of like a blue screen situation, but it's something that I personally have never seen a computer do before. And so maybe this may be a problem that some of you out there might have and maybe looking to fix it as well. So we'll get right into it right after a word from our sponsor. Are you tired of that annoying Windows activation watermark on your desktop? VIP URCD key has you covered with fully licensed codes to activate your favorite games and software. Purchasing your key is super easy. All you have to do is click on the item that you want Click buy to add it to your cart. Once in your cart, you can now enter my promo code RAV20. After adding the promo code, you'll see your savings pop up and you can then purchase your product with your chosen payment method. Finding and entering your Windows 10 CD key is super easy. All you have to do is go over to your user profile, find your purchase and click view keys and codes to reveal your new CD key. Then all you have to do is go to settings and windows, click on update and security, click on activation, and finally click on change product key and paste your new key into the window and click next. You'll now have a fully licensed version of Windows 10 with no watermark. Check the links in the description to start saving now. All right guys, getting straight into this. My laptop you see here, the Asus Zephyrus G15 laptop that I bought last year early, probably around February, March time, uh, has finally crapped out on me and it's been just over a year of purchasing it, you know, and, uh, and using it. I used, heavily used it last year. I took it to Maryland with me when I was gone on my military orders, and it was my main PC for quite a while, um, and it did great for me. It's, it's an amazing laptop, does everything I needed to do, but lately, it's been having this really weird issue. I'm not gonna just tell you. Let me go ahead and show you. So let me go ahead and boot it up real quick. So you'll see that it will go through its normal boot sequence here. RGB and the, the keyboard works, everything, even that splash screen that always comes up on the ROG laptops still works. But when it tries to boot to Windows here, you'll see what happens. We end up getting this really weird blue screen and I've never seen this happen before. Check it out. So look, you may think, is this a blue screen of death? Is this a normal blue screen of death? I don't know because there's no error code or anything that comes up like a normal uh, BSOD does. It usually has some kind of uh, you know, illustration here. It usually tells you what went wrong. Nothing like that on this. And when I press the enter key down here, like to try to get into Windows, the screen just flashes. So yeah, I have no idea what this issue is. And let me go ahead and continue here. Let me show you. You can go into the BIOS though. This is one of the things that I can do. I can get into the BIOS and try to tweak something, but you guys will notice something as soon as I get in there. So check this out. It's gonna go ahead and reboot again, I think and it's gonna to try to boot into the BIOS this time so we can try to tweak a few things and take a look at some stuff. So as you see, splash screen once again, just like it should. And then we are able to enter the BIOS so we can check stuff out um, and, and we'll see. So here we go, we're in the BIOS here and as you can see, everything so far is good. Um, the BIOS version, all that kind of stuff, it detects everything, that memory is detected. Our 3070 is still there. But the thing that I noticed that is a little fishy here is when it looks, when you see storage, it only detects my second SSD, the one that I store all of my games on. It does not detect, however, my first SSD, which has my Windows installation on it. So first thing I thought, okay, maybe the hard drive's dead. That, that is probably the, our end goal there. If none of, nothing I do here works, that is what I'm gonna have to do. I'm gonna have to go to the store, buy a new hard drive, install Windows on it again, or restart my Windows installation. But there's a couple of things maybe we can try here. So let me go ahead and go to our boot menu, and this is when you'll see this a little even, uh, oh, see, look, there you go. When I go to boot menu, the system cannot find any bootable devices. There you go, right there. So that basically, it's not finding that drive. So let me go ahead. This is in easy mode, by the way. I don't know, the, the thing's having a little trouble moving around there. So let's go to advanced mode. Okay, and then go to boot. And right here, you can see there's no, there's no boot options. Normally you can delete a boot option here, but there's nothing there. So it's not, it's not getting anything. So it does have fast boot enabled. So what I want to do here, let's maybe let's just, let's just disable fast boot real quick and let's try that. That's the first thing we're going to try. 
Let's go ahead and try that and see if that fixes anything. Okay, and once again, it just boots right into the BIOS. We don't, we're not able to boot to a, uh, to any kind of installation, nothing. Um, if I go to boot menu here again, there's no bootable devices. So that didn't fix anything. Um, one thing I wanna do also before I take something apart, I may just put my Windows installation key in here and see if the, um, the drive is even detected by that. So let me go ahead and do that real fast and see if we can actually somehow find the drive. Okay, so we at least have the Windows splash screen right here and it looks like the uh, Windows installation um, media will start to boot up here. And all we can do from this point is see if there is a way to try to recover the drive. But the only way we can do that is if the if Windows can even find it or if the uh, it's somehow the drive becomes detectable again. All right, so we now have all the screws out and it's it's a lot of them, guys. So I highly suggest if you guys are doing this, just a quick tip for you, getting some kind of magnetic uh, parts holder like this. And uh, I leave the screws in their layout so I don't remember, or I don't forget where they go when I have to put them back. Just a little quick tip for you guys. But anyway, let me go ahead and crack this thing open here. There we go. It's very simple to get this thing open. I really enjoy that about this laptop itself. Um, okay, so here's all the guts right here. Um, you'll see cooling over here. I, I mean, actually, I can clean that out while I have this open. That's kind of nice. I'll probably do that here in just a second. But you can see right here on this side, that's my Sabrent rocket that I put in myself. That's my games drive, which it was detecting in the BIOS. It still detects this. This is the system drive that came with the laptop when I bought it. It's a SK Hynix um, you know, SSD drive. I don't know if, I think it's an NVMe drive. Um, let me go ahead and pull it out really quick so we can take a look at it. Um, so this is, this is the culprit right here. Um, so far, this is, this is what's having the issue and this is what um, we're, we're having to deal with right now. So let me see what's going on here. Let me see if there's anything visibly wrong with it that I can just see right away. Uh, how do you pull this thing? There we go. So let me go ahead and, uh, thermal pad looks good. I mean, there's nothing that that's, was there before. Let me see. I mean, you guys can check it out on camera here. Um, I mean, I don't, it doesn't feel too hot. It doesn't feel like any, isn't, I don't see any visible marks on it that would suggest that it's burnt out or anything's wrong with it. Let me go ahead and peel this cooler, cooling pad back real quick. No, as you guys can see, it, it doesn't look like, yeah, it doesn't look like there's any degradation or anything like that, anything wrong with it. It looks like it's totally fine. What I'm gonna do also, since I have this already cracked open, I'm actually going to go ahead and reseat the RAM too, because you never know, man. It could be it could be one of a million things that's going wrong with your PC. So RAM sometimes has an issue or has a, a, an ability to make a PC not boot. So I've seen that happen a bunch of times. So I'm gonna go ahead and just try that. Let's see, let me go ahead and reseat this. And that is back in. Okay, so RAM reseated. All right, and then let's reseat this hard drive. Let's make sure that's all the way in. We'll go ahead and take the screw and make sure it's, oh, shit. That's not good. So obviously I reseated the RAM, I reseated the hard drive. Um, did that fix anything? That was my last ditch effort before I go out and buy another hard drive. <laughs> Let me go ahead and see. Nope, looks like we are back where we started the first time. So here we go again. Uh, Sabrent Rocket is detected. Um, boot menu, no bootable devices. So, okay, I just thought of this. Um, I've noticed that the Sabrent Rocket right here, my, my games drive has been detected this entire time, obviously, and it has been in this PCIe Express slot. So I'm wondering, maybe I should try our drive that I suspect might be dead. Let me try that in this slot because we know the slot works. That will rule out that it's the, not the slot, it's the actual drive itself. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. Let me switch these out. All right, so I've switched our suspected dead drive into the left side. Now where the uh, the drive that was working is was in. So now let's go ahead and boot up and see if we can even detect the drive. Okay, and here we are into the BIOS and guys, Look what we see here, no storage device present. 
even in the other slot, which we know works because our Sabrent rocket drive right here is totally fine. And uh, this has been detected the entire time. So it looks like you guys, we may have a dead hard drive. Now I have personally never had an SSD of any kind fail on me before, not a, uh, you know, a uh, 3.5 millimeter one um, or one of these newer uh, NVMe drives. I've never had one of these fail on me before. Um, but you know, it goes to show you that sometimes those OEM parts that manufacturers put in like laptops and pre-built PCs sometimes, maybe they're not of the highest quality and maybe, you know, just me using it for so long might have worn it out or something may have happened. One of the sectors may have gone bad or something like that. So it could be an entire other video trying to diagnose that hard drive and see if I could fix this bad sector or something like that. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna simply do what you should do in this situation. Of course, if you're not under warranty like I am, uh, my warranty has passed. If you're in this situation, what basically you gotta do at this point is bite the bullet and say, all right, I gotta reinstall Windows and uh, I need to get a new SSD. So I'm gonna go to Best Buy and I'm gonna go buy myself a new SSD real quick and then we'll continue the video once I'm back. Eventually. And we're back. So after a little trip to our friends over at Best Buy, because I mean, it's the closest thing I could find to like a computer store around my house. Uh, we went ahead and went and got a WD Blue SN 570 NVMe SSD, one terabyte to replace the broken drive or my suspected broken drive, I don't know. But either way, this thing should be just fine. It has just about the same performance, if not maybe even a little better than the driver we're replacing. So hopefully Western Digital can, uh, you know, remedy what's going on here and uh, last a little longer. And this one also has a five year warranty. So if this one decides to crap out on me, I'm gonna get myself a new one. So anyway, let's go ahead and pop this in the machine and see if it works. All right, so here we are in the Windows installation. I'm gonna go ahead and just click through this um, and install it now. And we're gonna see if it can detect the drive and see if uh, it'll allow us to install Windows on it. Because if I went into the BIOS right now, it actually shouldn't detect the drive technically because it has not been initiated yet um, or you know started up. In Windows, you gotta do that um, when you put a new drive in. So right now though, if uh, Windows finds it when you're doing the installation, we should be able to uh, see the drive there. So let's go ahead and see if it shows up and there we go. So right there, that is our unallocated space drive right there. And you can see all 931.5 gigabytes are available. So it does see the drive and we can now make this our new um, drive here. So anyway, let's go ahead and just do that. Let's go ahead and do that. And then we'll go ahead and go through the entire installation process and I will be back here with you guys once all of that is done. All right, everyone, here we are back in the BIOS. And as you can see right here, Look at that, that is something we didn't see before. We now have something under boot priority and it is our actual Windows drive that we just installed here. And you can see in storage, look at that, the drive shows up right there. So let's go ahead and go to boot menu. Yep, and there it is. It's the only device to boot from. So as you can see here, we now have a working computer. Uh, everything's good here, I'll show you guys real quick. Let me go into the, this PC, the new drive that I just put in, um, it's actually working and it's just got Windows on it and that's it and I have a perfectly working uh, drive to go off of now. And it does look like my Windows activation for some reason. Um, let, me, let me actually check that real quick. I wonder if it's, uh, let's see, is activated digital license? No. So I don't know what happened, but I think because of my Microsoft account, I think it just linked my account that I already had on the last hard drive. And now I have an, I still have a, you know, activated version of Windows. So I didn't even have to go buy another key, which was pretty cool. Um, so I didn't add any more money onto what I had to do to get this to fix. So all in all guys, uh, to get this to work again, all I had to do was spend uh, about $90 on a new SSD and now I'm back up and running. So, you know, maybe uh, this kind of like lets you guys know if you guys have a little bit of tech know-how with stuff like this, um, you can save yourself a lot of money. Uh, and that's why I'm here to bring you this kind of video. So that way you guys can do this yourself and you, you don't gotta pay the, uh, the repair shop or Geek Squad or whoever you guys buy it from, you know, hundreds of dollars to fix something when it can be done for, you know, 
that, that like 100 bucks if uh, you have the right know-how. So anyway, that's really going to do it for this video, guys. I'm glad I was able to solve the problem. Um, if you guys are having the same problem, leave it in the comments below. Let me know what was happening to your PC and uh, if this video helped you guys out at all. And if it did, make sure you guys go ahead and like the video. I always love seeing if you guys like the videos or not. And then if this content really does help you out and you want to see more of it, go ahead and get subscribed with those notifications on. So that way you'll always be notified on my next video. That's going to be it for this one. I'll catch you guys in the next one.